Hello everyone and welcome to this very special edition of the 2022 Annual High School Ceramics Exhibition. I'm Beth Ann Gerstein and I'm the Executive Director of the American Museum of Ceramic Art in Southern California. Joining me today to celebrate the next generation of ceramic talent from across the United States are my colleagues, Pam Aliaga, Exhibition Manager, and our new Education Manager, Carly Lake. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Beth. Um, I'm excited to be here and share all the wonderful art that we received throughout the United States, but also to promote our Teen Council program that we have to offer here at AMOCA for 2022 and 2023. This is a great opportunity for students who want to create leadership skills, event planning, or even grow your portfolio. Um, also, building your resume is really important. At the end of it, you get to have curatorial experience, field trips, and you get to do a team takeover, which can always end up to be an exhibition slash party. <laughs> um, and now, I'm excited to share with you guys our high school annual exhibition. Thank you, Pam. It's been a pleasure to work with you, Carly, and Ashley Rowley on this exhibition. I would also like to thank the Dew Foundation for their support of AMOCA's programs and the Ruth and Joseph Reed Foundation for their support of our field trips, teen council, and the high school exhibition. When we closed the museum due to COVID in 2020, we moved the high school exhibition online and expanded the exhibition to include artists from across the country. It's a joy to honor all the participants in this exhibition. I want to thank the school districts who support the arts in their community, and I also want to thank the teachers who foster the creative arts in their classrooms. This exhibition is especially near and dear to my heart. When I was in high school, a long time ago, I participated in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards program. This is a national program that started in 1923. It was started by the founders of Scholastic Magazine, who said there were plenty of award programs for sports and scholastic achievement, but there were no awards for the arts. It's a joy to carry this idea forward as part of AMOCA's programs. And now I'd like to hand you back to Pam. I'm happy to report that this year we had about 282 applications from 16 states and 50 cities this year. Competition was incredibly strong with almost 100 more applications than were received last year. The exhibition jury process is based on reviewing technique, design, concept, and narrative. With this difficult process, we juried the exhibition down to 100 artists for 9th and 10th grade combined, 11th grade, and 12th grade. There are three honorable mentions and one best in show. The Best in Show winner from each level includes a cash award and one-year membership to AMOCA in recognition of their achievement. And let's start the award ceremony. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be uh, joining AMOCA as the new education manager. And I'm very excited to be a part of this exhibition. And I'm going to kick it off with the 9th and 10th grade awards. First honorable mention award goes to Julissa Espinoza from Los Angeles, California. Their platter shows a remarkable job throwing the form and adding elegant handles. She has considered every aspect of the platter from her choice of surface decoration using flowers, vines, and gold luster edging really completes the piece. Next honorable mention award for 9th and 10th grade goes to Allison Chung from Glendora, California with their baby sculpture who at first glance gives me the wonderful eerie vibe thanks to the impressionistic feel this artist took in detailing. They emphasize the folds and textures of the clothing by using underglades to mimic that cotton-like texture and Allison went as far as recognizing facial features and movement in their piece giving it a little attitude. All right, this honorable mention award for 9th and 10th grade goes to Q Sun Kim from Seattle, Washington. Q Sun's A Magic Tea Set is a whimsical celebration of the famous rabbit in the hat magic trick. The artist's choice to include the magician's wand as the spout, hat as the body of the teapot, and a chain for the handles and the rabbit's head as the lid of the teapot is truly amazing. In addition, Q Sun included rabbits in the teacups to complete the set. So whimsical. Best in show for 9th and 10th grade goes to Michaela Arsene from Lake Forest, California with their Lady Davis sculpture who is giving us a showstopper look with these 
textile elements and focus on patterns and fabric folds. Even catching how to replicate those small jewelry details, our artist even flipped the switch on us and made our queen a feline. <laughs> Such character development that goes into making this sculpture is creating a piece with precision and including a gown and accessories. Now on to the 11th grade awards. Now we have the first honorable mention for grade 11 goes to Kanya Smith from Tustin, California. Their armadillo back sculpture is an okirina, which is a whistle or flute instrument. Kanya shared with us that the armadillo is typically known for being guarded and closed off to the world. The combination of the armadillo with a musical instrument symbolizes the freedom that's achieved through, achieved through musical expression. With an open mouth and perked ears, the singing armadillo lifts its head to perform a song. The body includes seven tone holes with, while the tail acts as a mouthpiece and a thumb loop. This piece is well executed and has a wonderful narrative. And the next honorable mention for grade 11 goes to Jensen Wilson from Post Falls, Idaho. Their mechanical shark sculpture is the steampunk vision of a shark on rivets, wheels, and the choice of metallic glaze completes this look. This sculpture is wonderfully detailed with almost realistic mechanic structures conjuring visions of an unworldly ocean environment. The final honorable mention for grade 11 goes to Sarah Gormley from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Their fitting the mold demonstrates to us a con concept and an amazing use of mixed media. The artist built this handsome ceramic head with a twist, utilizing gears, small ladders, and really setting the scene for the thought behind this piece. Uh, she examines how we build societal pressures on ourselves, and Sarah goes even far enough to create an external story of what's happening outside of her mechanical head with the construction site and union workers to make this piece really come to life. The Best in Show Award for grade 11th goes to Gavin Longhorst from Claremont, California. Gavin's work demonstrates the high level technical ability and consideration of the sculpture in the round. This is an unusual self-portrait in that the facial features are covered by thick sunglasses and a mask, but in contrast, in the back of the head unleashes a detailed frenzy of emotions and expressions. This is a wonderful composition and overall a work of ceramic proficiency. All right, now we have the first honorable mention for grade 12. This goes to Melody Huang from La Quinata, California. Their untitled vase is an eloquent silhouetted vase with an impressive sgraffito illustration. It makes us wonder where this architecture and this landscape are coming from and evokes a sense of travel and memory. Looking further into the linear details, the artist made a very interesting choice to have some of the windows in the buildings that we see, some of them have the lights on and some of them have the lights off. And it creates this subtle human presence into the scene of the town. Overall, this piece shows a superb level of skill and technique. The next honorable mention for grade 12 goes to Maya Gatsteller from Post Falls, Idaho. Their time fly sculpture not only is a functional form, but has working dials, also showing the clever usage of image application. The artist has hand built a ceramic camera and a film roll that displays family images in their piece. I admire the construction of this camera and the level of planning that went into it. Above all, the roles of the family images applied is something that most viewers can connect with, lending a more personal story about the artist. The final honorable mention goes to Hannah Yard from Winter Park, Florida. Their 6,737 piece sculpture is a melting Rubik's cube with pieces missing. Hannah can speak many languages and says that the melting aspect of the piece represents the phenomena of the languages sometimes blending together in their head. Some pieces are fragmented to embody the fact that the other languages they can speak, for example, Chinese and Arabic, are sometimes broken. This piece is yet another feat of immense detail and thoughtfulness in the making and the planning. And I'm personally impressed 
with the amount of patience and precision at the underglazing that went into this. For our closing award, Best in Show for Grade 12 goes to Wilfredo Aguip from Lake Forest, California, with their helmeted warrior sculpture and pressed us all with a stunning portrait, whose helmet is thoughtfully constructed and designed with traditional looking designs, almost giving it a historical feel, but with the color usage, it brings more of a contemporary realm, giving us that 21st century warrior look. I want to congratulate all of the students and their teachers who made this program possible. You can see all of the work in the exhibition on our website at www.avoca.org.